This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. It would seem that we are in the season of sexual allegations. This is Wretched Radio. It seems Howard Weinstein opened up the floodgates. More and more people making accusations against him. More and more people making accusations against, well, everybody, including the former president, George Bush, the senior celebrities being accused of sexual allegations and scandals, politicians. It is rumored that our government has paid out a fortune to protect seated representatives in our federal government. We're even hearing it in the church. Yesterday, I saw a story of a pastor going to leave his name out because it is an allegation who is now accused of molesting a four-year-old girl for years. The scandals are everywhere. The question is, how do we respond to these allegations? Let's break it down, James Brown. Two realms. Let's leave government and Hollywood in one camp because they are. And let's focus on our camp, the church. Here's the challenge for the church. A woman has the courage, and it takes courage, to confide in somebody that they are being abused. Now, let's just say, I'm painting a scenario here. Let's just say that that abuse is happening in the church because we all know that does happen. The Proverbs remind us that when you hear one person's side of the story, it is so persuasive until you hear the other side of the story, and then you realize, well, this is going to take some noodling. So here then is the conundrum for Christians, whether you are involved with the details and with the person making the allegation or just in the church, how do we find the balance of not being a jerk to a woman and saying, well, we've got to talk to the guy first about this, and, well, we don't know for sure you're telling the truth. That's happened way too many times, and it shouldn't. Having said that, how can we be sensitive and thoughtful and cultivate a culture where women feel free to confide in virtually anybody and feel safe in professing that, They've been abused by somebody. It is a tricky balance, being sensitive, loving, thoughtful, and yet not assuming that a person is guilty. Do you feel the tension? How do we figure out the balance? Who else should we talk to than our good friend Rick Thomas? Well, at least uh, we think he's our good friend, whether... It's reciprocal, remains to be known. Rick Thomas, you hear his voice on Drive by Marriage. It is an outstanding resource at wretched.org. He is a biblical counselor. He's been doing this now for over 70 years, and he joins us now on the phone. Hey, bro. Hello, good friend. How are you? Rick, am I describing and setting this table accurately that this is a very uh, difficult sort of scenario inside of the church, being loving? to a woman who's making an allegation and yet not automatically assuming that the person is guilty that she's accusing? Yeah, you said, excuse me, you have set a complicated table, uh, which is the only way it can be because what we're talking about is sin. So when sin happens, uh, there is no good way out from here. Uh, It's always complicated. It's always painful if you are going to move forward. So yeah, you've addressed it pretty well. So as a biblical counselor, undoubtedly, you have been involved in these scenarios. Let's, let's be specific. A woman comes to me and, and, and confides, uh, there's somebody in the church who has been mistreating me. What is my tone? What is my attitude toward that Christian sister? Christian counseling is neither Christian nor counseling if it is done without tears. And there is no more important place, in my view, um, when a counselor or a Christian uh, should demonstrate that is when someone has been abused, especially sexual abuse. It's one of the most horrific and devastating things that can happen to a man or a woman or a boy or a girl. And so the first call to action is compassion. 
All right, now the second. Let, let, the wait, second, before you wait, don't go, go to don't go to second call. Don't go to the second <laughs> call yet. I want to just stay there for a moment. What if in your it's floating through your mind, and I and I think this is a reasonable thought because let's be honest, false allegations have been made before. I if if, if I'm not sure that the allegation is true, does that change my compassionate response? No. Because if the person is telling the truth or if the person is lying, the person needs compassion because there is a problem. Mm. That was helpful. Excuse me? That was helpful. Seriously, that helped me a lot. You're right. That that helps. That's that's very, very practical. All right, keep going. But what I would attach to that is, I mean, there's a difference between suspicion and discernment. Uh, So... A discerning person will automatically know that you have to talk to the other party. A discerning person will have to know that there is potentiality, that there can be some untruth in these claims. But being discerning is far different than being cynical or being suspicious about the person. A discerning person, the victim of abuse, they will feel your compassion and they will feel that you are for them. If you are suspicious or cynical, they will also feel that as well. I think sometimes people think that there's only one category is to be suspicious of people. And that's really the wrong attitude that any Christian should have. But we shouldn't. Dismissing suspicion doesn't mean that we can't be discerning. And you can be discerning. If you are wise, you're going to understand the comprehensive nature of the problem. But you don't have to reveal that to the person that you're talking to. And if you're truly discerning, they will not perceive that. They will just perceive your care or your compassion. All right, let me let me just press back on that a little bit, okay? The, the person that is being accused is uh, somebody that I know. I believe they have a great deal of integrity. And so I, I, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. And my concern would be that if I simply act compassionate without any caveats, without holding back, I'm going to be telling her, I agree with you, that man is guilty. Help me jump over that hurdle. Well, being compassionate is not commiserating or sitting there uh, just crying. And so... Compassion is a worldview and it's an attitude, but what comes out of that, you you start asking questions. But those questions come from a caring heart. They actually feel uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, love is kind, love is patient. They feel your long suffering, Galatians 5, fruit of the Spirit. But that, again, it doesn't dismiss, compassion doesn't dismiss discernment. And so through this worldview of compassion, you're unpacking the situation and you're asking questions and you're also doing it in a safe environment. So it's just you and the other person talking, which this is absolutely essential to what you're saying, that you want to keep the circle tight in the beginning, because let's say that it wasn't true, then the reputation of this person that stake, but it's just you and the abused person, the alleged victim, in a conversation. And so you start having that conversation, but the conversation can't sound like an interrogation, and it can't sound like you're suspicious. But again, that doesn't mean you can't ask questions, and you can't unpack it and try to find out what really happened. So let let me, let me pare it back to you, what I've gleaned from this that has been very uh, illuminating for me. When I'm dealing with somebody who makes this statement, my role is not to act as judge, juror, and executioner. I, I, or, de- or defending the other person. Or defending because the other just, person. I'm just it, here to just care because sin topic. is happening, and I see this in a much bigger context than I need to be the one who ma- renders the verdict on this. No, there's a sin issue, no matter whether it's true or not, and I am so I am dealing with a professing believer's heart, and I'm dealing with their life, and I'm going to be compassionate, and we'll see how what how the details play out. Is that a fair Correct. summary? Absolutely, and uh, you really just put yourself in the other chair. And let's say if it's true, and it happened to you, how would you how would you want to be counseled in that moment? And that's what you want the other person 
to feel. You just can't go at it with, I'm defending my friend, and I think that you're lying. That's one of the most harsh things that you could do. Uh, and a discerning person may have those thoughts, but it, in, in, when you're playing cards, it's called a tell, and they would never see that tell because it's inappropriate. As always, outstanding. If you've never visited Rick Thomas's website, oh, you're just you're just missing so much wisdom. RickThomas.net. Just go through all of the articles and look for the subjects that are applicable to you, and you will find biblical help and hope there. RickThomas.net. You're also hearing biblical counseling applied to a real-world scenario, and that is abuse inside of the church. How do we help these women through what... Is there a more horrific experience? Next on Wretched Radio. Don't forget, if you would like to hear the entire daily broadcast, simply visit wretched.org, go to iTunes, figure out your favorite Android listening platform, and you can listen to the entire program every single day, downloaded to your listening device for free. Well, thanks to our monthly supporters called the Gospel Partners. If you'd like to partner with us, we'd be very, very grateful. Simply visit wretched.org.